Hey everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch. The SLS core stage for Artemis II is going through final preparations at the Machute Assembly Facility in New Orleans East to get ready for shipment to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If plans and weather permit, it will be rolled out of the factory at MAF and placed on NASA's Pegasus barge for the week-long tow through the Gulf of Mexico and around the Florida Peninsula and eventually to the Kennedy Space Center area. With that milestone marking completion of the Core Stage 2 build in a couple of weeks, let's take a look back at the several years of its history. Core Stage 2 is planned to be the second and last unit to be fully assembled at Michoud in New Orleans, and the engine section structure for the third build was shipped to Kennedy Space Center over 18 months ago, where final assembly of SLS Core Stages will occur from now on. With delivery of the second SLS core stage around the corner, let's take a look at some of the history of the build. The first flight article, Core Stage 1, rolled out of Michoud Assembly Facility on January 8, 2020, which was four and a half years ago. Major production of the second core stage was already underway by that time, but the COVID-19 pandemic was one of the reasons for work stoppages or slowdowns on Core Stage 2 in the past few years. If you set aside those periods of time, I think it's fair to say that the stage could have been delivered to Kennedy Space Center last year. In fact, the stage has probably sat mostly dormant this whole year, with integrated functional testing being completed in January. Institutionally, NASA and Boeing understand the build process much better than they did for the first core stage, and improvements to the process were made even before that first build was completed. The work itself to build the stage was also reported to be more efficient and higher quality. But it still took longer than desired to complete the stage. Although the second core stage has not been the critical path for the Artemis II schedule, some of the work stoppages or slowdowns were due to unfinished parts. The big question is when deliveries will reach the one unit per year rate necessary for Artemis to start flying annual missions. That leads to questions such as how close Boeing is to that delivery rate. And one of the questions for the future is when the contract situation will be clearer and how that might improve supply chain conditions to facilitate reaching that initial production and delivery rate. The overall build for Core Stage 2 stretches back into the last decade. The hardware for the first two units was attached to a contract from the Constellation era, and some of the long lead structural elements, like barrel and gore panels, was at Michoud for most of the past decade. Welding of the L-ring to the engine section barrel was completed at the end of October 2017. That's only half of the engine section structure, but it's an example of how long ago production work had been underway. This is a low-res version of a still image of the barrel in Building 115 after being lifted out of the Vertical Weld Center. This was part of a NASA presentation to the NASA Advisory Council in late 2017, but there's no date associated with it. It would need to be before October 2017 since that's when the L-ring was welded to the top of the barrel. This is how some of the structural hardware looked in March of 2018. This is a shot of the engine section barrel with the L-ring in storage with one of the domes for the propellant tanks. That L-ring to engine section barrel weld in the large vertical assembly center welding tool was made before a wave of modifications were made to the tools based on lessons learned during the first build. Another example of production changes was to send elements of the engine section thrust structure back to the supplier to drill the bolt holes into those elements and incorporate that into the manufacturing process for future builds. This is a shot of the forward skirt barrel taken on the same day in March 2018. It was also in storage waiting for its two L-ring welds. To the left is one of the simulator structures that would be used by the remaining structural test articles that were still at Michoud in assembly. Welding of the rest of the core stage two structures picked up in late 2018, with the forward skirt and liquid oxygen tank welds being completed first. This is a NASA photo of the core stage one forward skirt being prepared for stacking on top of the liquid oxygen tank in January 2019 as a part of the forward join. 
In the background, we can see the forward skirt structure for Core Stage 2 now has its L-ring welds, and it was headed to cell G to get those rings and the weld lands sprayed with primer. Here's a NASA shot of it being lifted the next day. Welding of the liquid oxygen tank domes and barrels was completed in the VAC in the spring of 2019, and it went through post-welding baffle installations, plug welds, ultrasonic evaluations, and proof testing after that. Bolting of the engine section barrel to the thrust structure started after the elements were brought together at the end of May 2019. By that time, the forward skirt was back in cell G for its foam sprays. Those were completed by the time these pictures were taken in Area 15 in mid-July 2019. The inner tank for Core Stage 2 went into cell G for its spray-on foam insulation sprays in early August of 2019, as the scramble to finish Core Stage 1 continued around the clock. Welding of the liquid hydrogen tank domes and barrels was completed and the tank was removed from the VAC in October. The next month, the LH2 tank was rolled out to building 451 to get set up for pneumatic proof testing there. By the time that the first core rolled out of the factory in early 2020, the propellant tanks for the second build were assembled, the dry structures were in integration, and the forecast was for the delivery of the stage in the first quarter of 2022. The forward skirt and engine section integration areas were co-located at MAF for the first two builds, with the forward skirt on the left here in Area 15 and the engine section on the right in Area 51. In early February 2020, the inner tank was removed from cell G with thermal protection system foam sprays complete. It was loaded onto a barrel assembly transportation tool, or BAT, and taken back to the east end of building 103 to begin integration, basically internal outfitting. The LH2 tank returned to building 103 from building 451 after proof testing in mid-February, and the LOX tank was removed from cell E, where the inside of the tank was internally washed and cleaned. It was then loaded onto RATS, or Rotation Assembly and Transportation Tool, and moved into cell P for primer sprays. Those were completed, and the tank was moved from cell P back to building 103 in mid-March 2020. And then the onset of the COVID pandemic stopped work. MAF transitioned to stage four of the NASA response framework to COVID at the end of the day on March 19th, which suspended all production work. A transition back to stage three began two months later on May 19th, beginning a slow ramp up of production activities. Footage taken in mid-September of 2020 and published in early December provided another quick view of all the elements of Core Stage 2 at that time. First, the LOX tank and the LH2 tank in the Building 131 TPS application cells. Presumably, the LOX tank is in cell N, being prepared for its SOFI sprays. The LH2 tank would be in cell P, and we can see that the substrate has received a code of primer. Next is the forward skirt, still in Area 15. That's followed by a view of the engine section, still in Area 51. And of course, we're looking at it from outside its integration tooling. Then there are shots of assembly of the boat tail structure nearby. Finally, the outside of the inner tank is shown on the other end of Building 103. Beginning with the second core stage build, inner tank integration was relocated adjacent to the structural assembly jig for the inner tank in the same general area as the dome welding tools. Work did continue outfitting the elements, and Major Join 1 of the top three pieces, 
also known as the Forward Join, began in April and May of 2021, when they were bolted together in cell D. That began several months of functional integration of the pieces. In July 2021, the engine section and boat tail were stacked in cell A to move up integration of those elements. By the time in mid-2021 when the boat tail was bolted to the bottom of the engine section, Boeing said that the need date for the stage was March of 2023, and their schedule was behind the previous 2022 target date due to COVID impacts to their suppliers. Some of those suppliers were down for a long time due to COVID, and the parts shortages were seen for things like some of the main propulsion system feed lines. In March of 2022, Major Join 2 began with the liquid hydrogen tank being bolted to the forward join, specifically to the inner tank, in the final assembly area at MAF. That began work to interconnect the top four elements and allow more work on the outside, such as beginning to install liquid oxygen feed line and systems tunnel hardware. In late May 2022, the engine section bow tail was also moved to the final assembly area to complete standalone integration. This was about the time that Artemis 1 rolled out to the pad to begin final integrated testing which drew a lot of attention away from future production at MAF, and also that testing dragged into the summer and the fall. So there wasn't as much news reported about the build in the middle of the year. And by 2022, Boeing had also started structural assembly of Core Stage 3, and was beginning the same for the long lead engine section element of Core Stage 4. I was able to visit Michoud in late July 2022 for nasaspaceflight.com and get an update on the overall status. As noted, the stage was basically in two pieces at that point. The four-fifths consisting of the mated forward skirt, LOX tank, inner tank, and LH2 tank, and the engine section with its mated boat tail fairing and base heat shield. Both were co-located in the final assembly area with ship side support arranged around the flight hardware. Internal sub-assemblies still needed to be installed at that point, and I also saw things like the LH2 aft manifold being staged in Area 20, and some of the LOX feed line sections in storage in that same area. The four fifths still needed that hardware to be attached, the brackets to hold the feed lines and the repressurization lines, and then the lines themselves. These are shots standing underneath the LH2 tank with the aft passive roller stand still in place. At that time, engine section integration was expected to be completed in October of 2022. It would be mated to the rest of the stage after that, and RS-25 engine installation was expected in the December timeframe, with delivery expected in mid-March 2023. Soon thereafter, the four RS-25 engines that would be installed in Core Stage 2 were trucked over from the Stennis Space Center to Michoud. Boeing announced its production expansion initiative in December 2022, right after Artemis 1, moving core stage engine section integration and overall core stage final assembly to the Kennedy Space Center. At that time, delivery of the stage had become the first half of 2023, with engine section integration now expected to be complete at the end of 2022. There was some thought at that time that the stage could be used to fit check final assembly tooling that would be installed in High Bay 2 of the Vehicle Assembly Building during 2023. However, neither the stage nor the tooling showed up in the VAB last year. As it turned out, the engine section was not rotated to horizontal until February of 2023, and it was another month before it was mated to the rest of the stage in mid-March of 2023. We're now getting close to the current time period where updates are irregular and mostly pictures only. It wasn't clear when the engines would be installed in the stage when it was fully bolted together, and aside from a few pictures on social media showing that the engines weren't in place, little else was reported in that time frame. It wasn't until late August 2023 that we heard from Aerojet Rocketdyne, now an L3 Harris Technologies company, 
that the engines were being prepped again for installation. After having started into that process back in March 2023, and then having to stand down. NASA finally confirmed, coincident with an Inspector General report, that another shortage of parts had forced Boeing to slow down final assembly work. The engines were finally installed in mid-September, and I was finally able to visit Michoud again with nasaspaceflight.com in mid-October of 2023. At that time, the final testing of the stage was expected to be completed in December, and the goal was to have the stage ready to ship by the end of the year. But that changed again right after New Year's, with Artemis II being delayed from the end of 2024 to the last quarter of 2025. And then functional testing was completed in late January of this year. With all the changes over the past 18 months or so since Artemis I, Core Stage 3 still has a long way to go to reach final assembly, and Artemis 3 itself faces a lot of schedule uncertainty. So as it turned out, Core Stage 2 just stayed in storage in final assembly for the first half of 2024, until this mid-July ship date was finally announced in mid-June. Public Affairs at NASA's Stennis Space Center posted a couple of shots of the nearly completed stage in the background of pictures taken during a June 27th tour of the main Building 103 factory floor by center interns. This was in a slideshow video that PAO posted on social media on July 3rd. These are the only public shots of the stage since the one shot that was taken in early June and published shortly thereafter. Even though the stage is a backdrop and the images are very low resolution, we can see that as of June 27th, Boeing had completed installation of the ground transportation versions of the engine blankets, but was still working to install the engine fairings. We can also see some bare primer at the LH2 tank to engine section flange and some bare P50 cork on one of the boat tail faces. The expectation is that those would be closed out with the S-180 manual spray foam and the white Hypalon paint, respectively. The base heat shield of the boat tail has already been closed out with the white Hypalon paint, with just the manhole in the center still obscured. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. We'll see if the plans and the weather hold for the core stage transportation, especially now that we're in the Atlantic hurricane season.